All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to look for the cosine equation and the sine equation when we're given a graph. And when we do it, I'm going to talk about this, this point is a minimum point, and so we'll call it the x min, the y min, um, referring to that fact that it's referring to the minimum, not that it's the smallest x value. Um, and similarly with the maximum, okay? So um, in order to find the equation, we have to recognize if we're going to do cosine, we have to recognize y is equal to a cosine b x minus c plus d is our general form that we have to consider. And the a value refers to the amplitude. The d value is our principal axis. And so if we want to, I often start with the d value. And if I just visualize it here, it looks like to me that if I put a line on here, it's going to be probably not quite there, but maybe right here. It's the halfway through exactly. And if I want to calculate that value, I have these series of steps that I can implore. Okay, so d, I can take the y max plus the y minimum, add them together and divide by 2. So I can take them and divide by 2. And so if I take this coordinate here, which I know is 1.6 comma 6, and this coordinate here is 0 0.7, 0 0.7 comma negative 4. If we look at that, find the d, I'm going to add them together and divide by 2. So d is going to equal to half negative 4 plus 6. So this is actually finding the average of these two values, which gives me uh, 2 times the 1 half that's there, which is equal to 1. So my d value, my principal axis is y is equal to 1. Um, when I, the next thing I usually tend to do is I look for the a value, which is this distance in here, or similarly in here. And so I could go from 1 to 6, that's going to be 5, or 1 to negative 4 is also going to be 5. The calculation I can do, what I can do for the calculation is if I look at my formula, I can subtract the y max and y min and divide it by 2. I can, can subtract them. So I can come along here and a is going to be 1 half the y max, which was 6, subtract the y min, which is negative 4, and so I get a half times 10, which is 5. And so I know my a value is equal to 5, d is 1. Then I need to go to my period. My b value is 360 divided by the period. And so in order to find my period, what I have to do, I have to look at either, I could go from a minimum to a minimum. I could go from a maximum to a maximum. I could go from a going upwards to another going upwards because these are all the same distance. And so the easiest, I often find the peaks, the valleys, the easiest ones to find. This is 0.7, this is 2.5. And so the period is going to be 2.5 minus 0.7. So 2.5, oh, 5 minus, minus 0.7, and I can get 1.8 is the period. And so my B value is equal to 360 divided by 1.8. So 360 divided by the 1.8 is equal to 200 is my B value. And then finally, my C value is the X max value. So for cosine, it's the X max value. So my C value is going to be 1.6. So C is equal to 1.6. And so if I put it all together now, if I put it all together, I know that F of X, my function, is going to be A, which is 5, cosine the b value of 200, x minus 1.6, plus the d value, which is 1. Okay, and then what I also should do is I should check it with my calculator. I'm going to go here, I'm going to plug it in, and I'm going to, it was 
five cosine 200 x minus 1.6, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, plus 1. Make sure I'm in degrees. And my window, I have a graph here. I'm going to make my window exactly the same as this. So I don't have to look at the points more closely than if visualize if they're the same. So if I look at my scale here, my x maximum is 3. And this looks like to be negative 0 0.5. So negative 0.5 up to 3. And, my, and we're going to go by 0 0.5, which is all the, these ones here. And the y min goes down to minus 5, negative 5. And the y max looks like it goes to about 7. And we're going to go by 2s. And so when we graph that, we can see visually that this is the same graph as shown here. And so we are able to successfully find the equation. That's cosine. Now we also are asked to find the sine curve as well. Well, when we look at this series of steps, if I look really carefully, I know that A value is the same calculation. The B value is the same calculation. The D value is also the same calculation. The only difference is C. And the C value, what we have to realize is we need to get the starting point for sine. And sine always starts in the principal axis going upwards, or this one here going upwards. That's the sine value. And so we're asked to find this particular x value for C. And so here's if we take x max plus x min and divide it by 2, assuming that the x min is the smaller of the two, so meaning is in this order. So if I take 0 0.7, 0 0.7 plus 1.6 is my x max. If I add them and divide by 2, that will give me, if I go to here, I get 1.6 plus 0.7 and I divide that by 2, I get 1.15. 1.15 is the C value. And so if I want to make the sine curve, everything's the same. So it's 5 sine 200 x minus 1.15 plus 1 is my D value. And if I go to my calculator and if I want to check it, I'm going to turn, uh, and I'll keep this on, I'm going to go here, I'll make it bold and let's go 5 sine 200 x minus 1.15 plus 1. Oh, 0 just because I hit it and it should go right on top of the cosine graph. And you can see by the bold it actually does. And so calculating the sine or cosine are very similar. You just have to be careful of the C values, and that is how we make our equation.